G'day everyone, you all seem to like my how to play Germany video, so today we're doing the UK. This is going to cover what I feel is one of the best ways to play as them in a historical game. This is going to focus mainly on single player, but you can use this as a basis for your multiplayer games too if you're starting to get into that. Firstly, let's go over the situation that we find ourselves in as the UK at the start of the game and our role, particularly if you're looking at like a multiplayer setting. So the UK is the old powerhouse of the world who's found themselves being outpaced by other countries like Germany, the Soviets and the USA. We we have less manpower, we have a smaller economy, and as well as that, we are an island nation, so any resources that we trade for are at risk of being raided. We are going to have our work cut out for us because our main goal here is to simply survive until the US can join the war and bring all of their military and economic might with them, as well as we need to try and win the air war, at least contend with the Axis in the air war. If you're doing a single player game, or if you're doing like a small multiplayer game, your main focus is going to be to rush and build your improved fighters or fighter two if you don't have the by blood alone dlc as well as you're going to want to be defending gibraltar here and the rest of north africa too in a lot of multiplayer games the axis can't actually invade the uk unless they take those two points so they're going to be the priority that we're going to look to work on today there's also a lot of important resources in asia that we need to defend particularly the rubber in singapore again we're an island nation so any resources that we trade with are going to be vulnerable to enemy submarines so later i'll give you a couple of tactics to help you deal with that. The US isn't going to join the war until around 1941 and with that they're going to bring their huge navy and industry so basically survival is the name of the game we're just going to be playing defensively. Also while you're doing that we are going to have to help the Soviets as much as we can because if they capitulate before the US joins it's basically game over. So how are we going to do this? Well we have a few benefits as the UK. For starters we have the second largest navy in the world behind the US and that's going to benefit us immensely particularly in the Mediterranean and in Asia as well. We can also call upon the British colonies, you know, those places that Britain borrowed artifacts from and are definitely happy to return when asked. So in summary, finders keepers go fuck yourself, cheerio. Anyway, we can take their manpower and divisions, much like their artifacts and land, which is one of my favorite ways to win Africa. As a democratic nation, we can trade for pretty much any resource that we need from the entirety of the world, just about, so long as we can deal with the enemy submarines. And we can also use our our sort of proximity here to cut off the axis from any supplies that they get as well. On top of that, if we become the spy master for the allies, we can get access to a decent amount of spies that we can use for all sorts of sneaky things. The first thing that we are really going to sort of want to focus on doing is getting to partial mobilization. To do that, we need to get 25% war support which as you can see here, we start off with only 15. We're gonna get this by sending attaches firstly to Spain and then later to China as well once their civil war or once their war starts. Basically, when you send an attache, you get 5% war support. To help get us over that 25% threshold, we are also gonna go down the home defense path, which gives us a little bit. And then also the issue gas masks focus, which is locked behind a world tension limit. We also wanna get the military training act. That's gonna help give us a bit more manpower to contend with. These two focuses though, you are going to need to do these as soon as you can. If you don't, you might have to drop back from partial mob, which is going to waste a lot of political power and time. The other focuses that we need to go for are general rearmament, which is also locked behind a world tension limit. And the big one here is the fighter command focus, which gives us a 100% bonus for fighter models. You are of course going to work down to get your extra research slot and the Royal Ordnance factories. And another handy focus is the BSA company. Peaky Blinders fans would know that the more Lewis guns and SMLEs that you have, the better. Finally, for this central tree here, we're going to reinforce the empire and come down to encourage the colonial elite. That gives us a nice little research boost. If you have players in your multiplayer game that are playing as the colonies, then it's also worth doing whatever focus is going to help develop them. If you're only doing single player though, you can pretty much ignore all that. Likewise, if you've got a player that's already going to be rushing fighters, then you won't need to rush yours. So just use your head, okay? Come on. We are going to start with limited rearmament though. We're just going to get those sieves active as soon as possible. And then for our research we are going to go for the standard industry techs obviously we'll be going down dispersed as well as your computing and you're also going to go for survivability studies once you finish survivability studies you want to jump over and complete the range improvements 
tech as well. And then you're gonna jump into your naval tab and you're gonna go for the active sonar, improved catapult, and sort of optional for the depth charge thrower, but it's nice to have. And yes, that's right. We are focusing on our Navy this game. Anyway, we're just gonna select our entire fleet and merge them together. You basically do that just by selecting all of them, assigning them to the reserve fleet, and then clicking this combine button here. They'll all make their way to one single port, makes it a bit easier for us to manage. You're also gonna exercise them, not exercise them until they're done. You're just gonna flat out exercise them and be sure to turn on automatic split off as well. For your naval production, you're just gonna finish that first cruiser that's almost done and you can delete the production for the rest of them. They just take too long to build and we're gonna change the design anyway. You can complete all the subs and destroyers if you want. And for your carrier, honestly, it's up to you. If you wanna build a larger surface fleet, go ahead and build some carriers. If you can't be bothered doing it, that's also fine. Like for single player, you probably don't need to. Um, one thing you will wanna do though, is come in here and set your naval bomber and carrier ratios to sort of 60% naval bombers, 40% fighters roughly. We're also gonna be refitting battleships today. So you can come in here and recommission the Queen Elizabeth class, Nelson class, and the Renown class. And then go ahead and decommission the G3 design. For the rest of our production, you should end up with one factory on trains and trucks, two factories on support equipment and towed artillery, and then eight factories on guns. Go ahead and set yourself up three stacks of civilian factories to build. You can also bring all of your non-carrier planes together just to make it a bit easier to organize. Or your army, you're gonna split it up like this where you've got your 16 infantry divisions just defending your ports in the UK. And then in a separate theater, we're gonna split up our defense like this. Take all of these divisions, by the way, and just convert them all to your garrison template. So four divisions on Gibraltar, four divisions defending Malta, four on Cyprus, five in North Africa, and then over in Singapore, three divisions there. I find, particularly for newer players, this is quite an easy way of keeping on track of how many divisions you've got defending in each place. They're not gonna move around this way. And then as we reinforce them, we're basically just gonna double the amount of divisions in each of these armies. So for example, we'll add four more to each of these armies here to sort of strengthen that. Same with North Africa and then uh, Singapore as well. You will notice that we run out of oil pretty quickly. Um, just come on through here and trade one unit with the US. I've done a bit of checking and that's enough for you to gain a decent amount of Navy XP. And the more you trade, it's sort of diminishing returns. So one unit is plenty. Also, don't exercise your land-based air force. Just keep Keep the exercising and the oil for your Navy for now. On that note too, once your carriers are all merged together, make sure you come in here and split up the ratio to be that 60-40 that I talked about before. The easiest way I find is just to split the air wings that are already existing on the carriers much like this. Don't forget to set up your agency and then for the upgrades, you're gonna go for local training centers, S pills, blueprint stealing, invisible ink, and form your cryptology department and then stop there. You don't need to do any more upgrades. Also, as you get the option, just make sure you're recruiting the German and Italian spies with local training centers. Germany gets ahead of time boosts to a lot of their industry techs. So we're gonna steal industrial blueprints to try to keep pace and even catch up a little bit. We'll also become spy master for the allies. And then as the war kicks off and they declare a war on more nations, we'll just get more and more spies. Once your naval production is done as well, or just to sort of anticipate that, you can go ahead and add a uh, line of convoys down the bottom as well. You're gonna wanna keep an eye out for when you get 35 naval XP. And then when you do, come into your spirit of the Navy and get the naval refit yard. Also, if you don't have the man the guns DLC, just ignore everything I'm saying about the Navy. Now, you may also be tempted to get one of the chiefs of Navy to get that XP coming in a bit faster, but you need the command power and political power to send an attache. So don't fall to the temptation. After limited rearmament we can't do any more focuses here so come across and do steady as she goes and home defense uh, and then after that you can start doing the other focuses don't forget to change your occupation law to local police force and change your template to your cavalry once you have enough political power for your first advisor just go ahead and jump on the silent workhorse that's going to allow us to get even more pee -pee. once you get your first advisor just save up about 250 political power and also make sure that you keep 50 command power so that way as soon as the spanish civil war starts we can send our attache and go ahead and jump onto partial mope 
All right, civil war started. We'll just have to boost relations with the Spanish a little bit, and then we can go ahead and send our attache. Once you've got your second spy, you can go ahead and infiltrate the civilian administration. We'll have our third spy soon. After you go to partial mobilization, the next advisor you want to get is the elusive gentleman. Once you get a bit of naval XP going, you can start refitting your ships. And the idea goes like this. Enemy naval bombers will target the biggest ship in the fleet. And that's generally going to be your battleships or your carriers. So what we're going to do is pack as much anti-air into our biggest ships as we can. The thing is, these ships take forever to build from scratch. So instead, we get a fairly compensated and unionized labor force to come along, tear off anything that doesn't point skywards from our existing ships, and replace it with pom-poms, which is the sound that these guns make as they defend your glorious surface fleet. That's true, look it up. This means that the enemy planes will target our battleships and they'll get shot down before they can do any damage to the rest of your navy and they'll live to fight another day. So that's the theory behind refitting ships. And to actually do it, what you're gonna do is go ahead and open up a design. We're gonna start with the Queen Elizabeth class. And the first thing you're gonna do is just add two to the net, like the end of the name. It's just gonna make it a lot easier to follow along with like what you're doing and tell you different designs apart. So we're basically just gonna come through and change all of the modules to anti-air except for your main cannon batteries and your engine and armor. The idea being the engine, armor, and batteries take much longer to refit, whereas you can change out the other modules sort of quite cheaply. On the top row as well, we can add three level two AAs, or we can actually add in two of these dual purpose secondary batteries, which they still provide anti-aircraft damage if you hover over the tooltip here, but they're also gonna give you a bit of light attack and piercing, which like it's gonna give us a bit more versatility. These ships can also take out enemy screens, which are not able to shoot back at them. So, you know, kind of handy little thing to have uh, but go ahead and update anything you can also go ahead and leave the fire control system on this actually gives a 10% boost to your anti-air as well so once your design looks something like this you can go ahead and save it you can see here as well that we've got about 14 and a half anti-air which is pretty good and our production cost is under ten thousand dollars ten thousand dollars it's under 10,000 production cost, which is the limit that's imposed by the naval treaties. I wonder what idiot decided on that. So just go ahead and do the same thing with the rest of your battleship designs that you've got here. Remember, only do the ones that you've left commissioned or you've recommissioned. Don't do the ones that you deleted. Once they're all finished, you can actually go to your Navy and select your task force. And then what you're gonna do is come along to a particular design. So for example, the Queen Elizabeth class, and just double click on it to select all ships of the same type. And then you're gonna click on this refit button here, which is the yellow arrow pointing upwards with a little plus on it. Now this is gonna show you all the different designs that are available that we could potentially refit this ship into. You can see here the Queen Elizabeth class two is only gonna take 73 days to upgrade. Whereas if we we're looking at one of the other designs, it's gonna take an insane, like over two years, basically. The reason is because the guns and armor and the engine are different. That's why we're only changing particular modules and we're making multiple different designs. Now, if we go ahead and upgrade the Queen Elizabeth class to the Queen Elizabeth class two, click OK. It'll take those ships out of your fleet and it's gonna add them into your production queue, which I just need to hit play to make them appear. So you can go ahead and delete your convoy production. And what's gonna happen is once these ships have been upgraded or they've been refitted, they'll automatically add back into your fleet. So from here, there's nothing else you really need to worry about doing, but you can just jump back through and convert the rest of your ships. Now, in the interest of saving some XP, the Revenge class actually has the same guns, engine, and armor as the Queen Elizabeth II design. So you can actually come in here to refit and use that same design, and it's only gonna be 70 days. The ships that you're gonna need designs for are the Queen Elizabeth, Nelson, Renown, and Admiral classes. Also, if you have a look at your fleet composition here, you'll easily be able to tell which ships are refitted versus those that aren't by the number two at the end of the name, which you've, if you follow my instructions, that will be on the end of the design. Doing this is gonna make your, uh, your Navy pretty much impervious to the Italian naval bombers in the Mediterranean, which is one of your biggest dangers. And same for the Japanese and their carriers over in the Pacific. So uh, yeah, that's just like one thing which sort of steps up your game as the UK. If you have any questions about that, let me know in the comments. If I've not explained it very well, I feel like that's pretty clear. But yeah, if you have any questions, just let me know. 
I've just had enough political power to go to partial mob. Once you've done that, save up another 150 and go to free trade. The bonus to your construction speed and research is going to be really handy. Also, you're going to want to be training some of these garrison divisions throughout the game as well to reinforce your uh, your forces in the Mediterranean and whatnot. You can go ahead and just reinforce them pretty much like this. And then just so we remember, we're going to go ahead and pop these troops on the uh, Singapore border and don't forget to exercise them. Fun little fact on the Navy, uh, you can actually research some techs by getting a research bonus using a bit of XP. 120 days versus 50, we're definitely taking that. Also, by this point, you should have a little bit of air XP. You can go ahead and make some carrier planes. Just put one factory on each at the top of your queue. Once you've done home defense, the colonial elite, and your limited rearmament here, you can come down and start going for your extra research slot. Um, basically, keep an eye out on the world tension as well. As soon as that gets to 10%, you want to go for general rearmament, even if you sort of have to like cancel a focus early in, because there is a chance that the world tension will spike above 10% and then drop back down again and it will lock you out of that focus once you've gotten the depth charge thrower or i guess just any of these honestly you can go ahead and research the 36 submarines that's if you want to do convoy rating of the germans and italians which i would probably recommend also once you've completed those techs as well what you're going to do is jump into your naval designer again hello we're back and go ahead and rename Honestly, you can rename these to whatever you want. You're going to go ahead and pop the binocular icon on here. And then what you're going to do is go ahead and delete everything except for sort of your basic, the most basic light gun. Uh, we're going to go ahead and replace the fire control with sonar. We're going to get rid of that dual purpose battery. You can leave the armor. And then what we're going to do is add on the two units of the level two catapult facilities here. Now we have a cruiser that's got 44 surface detection and 18 sub detection. We are eventually gonna add on radar to this ship as well later in the game. And then what we're gonna do is we are gonna make two variations of destroyers. The first one, you can call this one just green ship, leave it as the shield icon and literally delete everything except for the cheapest possible engine and gun. Honestly, with this one, this is a 1936 hull. You can even use the early ship hull to uh, get a cheaper design even. You are gonna be pumping out a lot of screening ships to just basically be cannon fodder for the rest of your fleet. We are also going to need a anti-sub warfare ship as well. And go ahead and change the icon here to the skull. Now, what you're gonna do is again, just add on the cheapest gun. You're gonna add on sonar, two of the depth charges. So basically this ship's got 25 anti-sub damage as well as a bit of detection we are going to have basically a production line for the screens the anti-sub warfare ships and our spotting cruisers and you can just add five factories or five dockyards rather onto each of them once your battleships and your carrier is done that'll just trickle down onto those dockyards and you'll start producing them now at this point we've got partial mob free trade we have our spy dude we are the spy master as well uh go ahead and get the supermarine get the supermarine air designer and then what you're going to do as well is get your air force chief of command the air reformer that gives you a little bit of an extra bonus to your air xp gain and then once you have 50 air xp come into your spirit of the air force and get the industry liaisons that's going to increase our research speed and then once you get your extra research slot on the next focus, you're going to go ahead and use two of your production or two of your research slots, one to research the improved small airframe, and then one to research the engine level three. If you don't have by blood alone, you'd basically just be rushing for the fighter twos. You don't have to use both of your slots. The improved airframe is kind of useless without the upgraded engine to go with it. Also, once you've researched your submarines, you can go ahead and create a design for that. Don't forget to give it a cool name. And again, you can just add a production line of that just with five factories on it. Also, uh, just for a quick snapshot of how I've got my army set up at this point as well, we've got 124 stack of our standard infantry in North Africa here, ready to defend that. Uh, as for our defense, for a multiplayer game, Again, if you are confident in your ability to hold North Africa, you technically don't need to defend the UK. Um, for single player, you definitely do, just always best to be cautious. I've got 12 divisions for Gibraltar, 12 for Malta, 12 for Cyprus, and 
10 defending North Africa. Now, we are getting pretty low on manpower. I've queued up more standard infantry divisions. One way you can get a little bit more is just to come around to your puppets and request some garrison support. But there you go. That's like an extra 100,000 uh, manpower we didn't have before, just thanks to India and Singapore. We've already prepared our anti-sub aspect of our navy, but we are also going to use some long-range tactical bombers to help us with that as well. We are going to go ahead and pop on one torpedo here. Engines and then all also flying boat, which increases our detection. The extra fuel tanks for more range. We actually don't need to add on any armor plates or anything like that. These are gonna be targeting enemy submarines. There's no need for you to have it like air defense. If you're gonna be using these against like, for example, the Italian Navy in the Mediterranean, then it's worth adding it on, uh, but generally you don't need it. So your design is gonna basically look like this. We are not really gonna focus on building these until later, but I just like to pop a bit of a production line here just so I don't forget about them. So we're gonna base them sort of out of Gibraltar, the Azores, 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 however you say that. Between our attack bombers and our spotting fleet and our anti-submarine destroyers, any German or Italian subs are going to have a rough time. The war between China and Japan has kicked off, so world tension has jumped up straight onto general rearmament. Once the Spanish Civil War is over, this can drop back down. Some Germany players can also deny you the, war, the war, world tension that you need for this. So yeah, once you have the opportunity, make sure you take it. Uh, again though, around this point, you want to be going ahead and researching that airframe ahead of time. Once we complete general rearmament though, we're going to go straight down to the fighter command man tech and complete that and then from there we are going to go for the aircraft production group that just makes your fighters a little bit cheaper again any advantage we can squeeze out is going to be worth it once you have the political power and the command power go ahead and send your attaché to china okay so fighter command is done once you have that bonus what you're going to do is come in and select the research slot which is like researching that tech just put it onto something else and then jump back on and you can see we've knocked off 100 days from that. As the UK on your original conscription law, this is pretty much the maximum army you're going to be able to pump out. The other thing which I probably recommend to going to a little bit more is the war industrialists. So we are going to start producing military factories about halfway through 1938 anyway. We really need to get a leg up on that fighter production. Go ahead and, you know, once you get to about June, July, finish up the production of whatever civilian factories that you're building. And then what we're going to do is is we're going to add a production for maybe around 10 dockyards or so and then we are going to jump pretty much purely onto civilian fact or onto military factories sorry now around this point as well you're going to need to research heavy machine guns and cannons as well for your planes a couple other things to work on obviously your infantry equipment techs and your artillery as well um, make sure you're using anything that gets you a bonus like for example the commonwealth sharing thing gets you research boosts to particular techs so go for those ones first if you see them i would also get marines as well they're going to be the main special force that you're going to be using you are going to want to save up and get alan brook the army maneuver uh, general i prefer getting the division speed it just helps your troops move around that tiny bit faster. I also like saving the command power. Come over to North Africa and at El Alamein, you're gonna build level 10 forts. And right behind that, you're gonna put a single naval base. Now the naval bases act as a supply hub. You need to remember to just connect that to the rest of these by a supply hub. The reason being like Alexandria has like it's a level eight port, so it's gonna get a lot more supply coming through there. If you are getting convoy raided and losing a lot of your ships in the Mediterranean, you can actually go ahead and just build, or you've got this railway here, but you can connect that up. Just as a last resort, you can block off any supply coming through the Med and sort of ship it all the way around Africa. From here, you can either go down Royal Ordnance and BSA, uh, I'm going to go for issue gas masks and the military training act because yeah, that minus 30% recruitable pop factor is so painful. Prepare for the inevitable is really good as well. It gives you more output and construction speed. And then once you complete those, you are going to want to come over here, go down the air defense path all the way down to secret weapons. On top of that, Getting the special air service is really helpful. That unlocks David Sterling, which is actually a special forces genius. So that's an extra 20% to your Marines, attack and defense. Also, just a quick note on doctrines, we are gonna go down battlefield support. Uh, we are also gonna go down base strike. And then for land doctrine, the trusty old grand battle plan, because, well, we're playing the defensive game, right? For your production as well, you're basically gonna wanna have about 25 factories on infantry equipment to keep yourself supplied. Uh, and then from there, 
there, you're going to have a couple of factories on trains, trucks, support equipment, also your artillery. And then I just like to add a big stack of infantry equipment at the bottom as well. We're going to convert a lot of those factories over to our planes once they're produced or ready to be produced. Now, if we have a quick look at our logistics, we actually have quite a lot of equipment. The only problem is we have no manpower to do it. Now, of course, I still haven't increased my conscription yet. But another thing that you can do is use the manpower of any of your subjects or exile governments. So how you use these is what you do is you click on this button here next to your division designer, and then you select the nation that you want to basically borrow a template from. We're going to use this one from Ethiopia. That's pretty much the same as it's actually the same as our own. So you go ahead and click copy and that's going to add that to your own vision template list. Just to help us tell this apart, we're going to go ahead and change the name and the design. So we're just going to call this Ethiopian Infantry Division. And then what you can do is you can just train them. So, and then basically what it's going to do, it's going to use your equipment but it's going to use the manpower of whichever nation that you've used the template of, which you can tell by the little flag here. You can actually change the design as well. So I'm going to give it support artillery. So now it is literally identical to the other one. It just keeps a bit of consistency through our army. And then we are just going to train as many divisions as we can. If you do go over for your subject, it is going to draw like on some of your own manpower. That's another little handy trick. Like that's another what 16 divisions that we could produce which we couldn't do before we've got our improved small airframe both our armaments and the engine all completed now it's time to make the design basically it's as simple as this honestly the amount you're going to need is going to vary wildly i would say you need at least 25 factories on here and you want to start producing them as soon as possible at this point the axis don't have planes that are going to be this good unless obviously there's an italian player that knows how to rush fighters as well generally you're going to be having the best planes uh, earlier so if you you go ahead and start producing a lot of these early you're going to have more advanced more of the more advanced fighters and then after we have that we'll start the production of our tactical bombers which are basically just going to be anti-submarine type fellas now we're into the start of 1939 you can start going for more of your cryptology and everything at this point as well uh we are pretty much right now at the stage where we want to be set up and ready for the war so in terms of your defense one division on each port in the uk itself is fine 12 divisions on each of these key areas is going to be enough another thing that you're going to want to do is build up the airports on each of these as well you can even add radar stations particularly to malta gibraltar and Alexandria and we will also split up our navy now so separate out your subs put them into the bottom theater and then we are going to split this into three task forces now there's two approaches you can do with your navy here the first one is just to deter the enemy from naval invading you the best way to do that is just to move the ship to a particular port put them on the region around it and put them on strike force. Now, if you actually want to use your Navy, you can use some of these uh, cruisers here, the spotting cruisers. You would basically add them onto that Admiral. And then what we're going to do is put them in the English Channel. The carrier fleet is going to be on strike force. And then your spotting cruiser, just one spotting cruiser is enough. You can put that on patrol. So then basically what's going to happen is that spotting cruiser is going to sail around here when it finds an enemy fleet your main fleet is going to come out of the port and engage them. The fleets, which have got two carriers, I'm going to put in the Eastern and Central Med, and we're actually going to be battling with the Italian fleet here. And then the fleets that have only got one carrier are going to be preventing a naval invasion of the Western Med and the not only the English Channel, but also the North Sea. We're basically going to have one fleet, which is going to be full of these spotting cruisers. And as such, you want to have this guy here who has the extra spotting speed. And then for this one, these are your anti-sub warfare ships. And then what you're going to do here, so you can see it's got the destroyer with the skull. We can have this set as a task force of 20 ASW. And we're basically doing that with our anti-sub warfare ships here. And what we're going to do is we'll basically just have all these cruisers split up into single stacks. So we're going to have a lot of task forces with one cruiser in each. And then we're going to have the anti-sub warfare ships set to strike force. But yeah, it's the same theory. Like once the submarines are spotted, your ships will come out and sink them. Works really well. Then your submarines, you can just do normal submarine stuff. What you can do is using this button here, you'll actually set which theater these ships will be deployed to. So you can have these ones go to your British ASW. The anti-sub ships will go to the ASW theater. Your screens will go to your carriers. And then your subs will also go to your ASW one. 
and then your carriers obviously go to carriers so basically it just means that they'll automatically sort themselves into the reserves on each I rambled on about the Navy for a bit, but again, it's pretty important if you want to do well. We are going to have to hold El Alamein here. I like to have another army group here just to sort of prevent any naval invasions from landing there. The other thing you need to worry about is enemy paratroopers. So again, if you can hold the ports and sort of have a solid line, it will help stop them from encircling you. And then these divisions, so these are our uh, Indian and Ethiopian divisions. You sort of looking at this, and you're like, oh, we don't really have enough divisions. Let me show you my secret trick. Well, not really secret, but my favorite trick. What you're going to do is come over to your colonies, starting with the greatest nation in the British Commonwealth, New Zealand. And then what you're going to do is open up the diplomacy menu and request their forces. And what you're going to do is you are going to come around and do that with every single one of the colonies. If you see an option for garrison support, take the garrison support too while you're at it. Why not? Now, if we have a look, we have... 56 divisions. They're various divisions. Some of them suck. If you look at the templates, they're not all going to be good. However, that's 56 divisions that we can use to cover front lines. I mean, like, look at these Malaysian ones. They are, look, pretty horrible. But the main thing you want to use these for are securing Africa. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put this army group on the Belgian border, just because in the past I've had Germany take this over and it's been an absolute pain to try and take back. We're gonna put one of the army groups here and then another army on this side. And basically once we go to war with Italy, we'll be able to just trap any divisions that they are silly enough to keep in this area. The AI will generally do it. Most players would probably abandon Ethiopia because they can't get supply to it, but it's gonna be a pain in your ass anyway, so best to deal with it. And yeah, at this point, we're pretty much ready for the war. Like honestly, if the war kicked off now, we'd be you know pretty well prepared. Getting everything set up ahead of time is gonna make your life a whole lot easier. Oh, and at this point as well, remember how I told you not to exercise your air force earlier? Well, you can go ahead and do that now. Also, another thing you need to have a look at too is at what point do you go from uh, free trade back to export focus? And the easiest way to tell that is look at your construction tab. You can see here how many factories you're trading away. So seven. And then you can also see here how many factories we've gained from trade. Four factories from external trade. So at this point, we're kind of putting out more factories than what we're getting back by having all of our resources available. We've taken advantage of most of the benefit of having that like construction boost. So yeah, from here, I would probably be looking to drop back to export focus sooner rather than later. Oh, one thing which is pretty important as well, don't forget to guarantee Poland. One thing I wanted to touch on as well, circling back to the fighter command is some people might say that I should have used that 100% boost for the advanced fighter airframe rather than the improved one. Well, I've just completed coastal command and as you can see, it gives 100% bonus to naval bomber models and close air support models. They've not changed this since by blood alone came out, but if we have a quick look at the air tab, we still get 100% boost, so you may as well use it on the improved small airframe just to get it that little bit quicker. It's finally happened. Germany's declared war on Poland, and we, of course, will help you invite them into our faction. You are going to need some planes over in the Middle East, two of these close air support. You can bring your tack bombers over as well. In terms of defending the UK as well from like the Germans wanting to strap bomb you, you basically want to have just like one wing in each region that has decent coverage using these northern air forts is going to be good and the old shadow scheme so we're starting to get our fighter production up a little bit we've got our we'll get our guns production at the top all of our support stuff so yeah from here you basically just want to be filling out as many fighters as you can now there are a couple of decisions which you need to take as well throughout the game so requesting the azores islands lease from portugal so they've accepted and we now get control over these islands and you actually want to put uh, airports on them. That's going to give you extra range for our attack bombers or our anti-naval warfare attack bombers that we're going to build. You really need to use your planes as well as your ships out here. And it also gives you another port for your, like, your destroyers to dock in. Make sure you take that decision. And there's also going to be some that are going to pop up for doing the speeches, like Winston Churchill's speeches. And that's going to help the US. So we're going to want to do them as well. I mentioned that research boost we have for the advanced small airframe. A couple of ways you can do it for here. You can either start rushing it now. Like, for example, if we were in a multiplayer game, I would be researching this straight away. The earlier you can get those advanced fighters, the better. In single player, you can probably get away with not doing it um, just for the sake of 
having that tech, I'm going to. And we're going to attack Italy and Ethiopia. Oh, they're last standing. Whenever you see this happening, particularly because like we don't want to wear down these troops, just let them waste their command power. This goes for like any player that you're coming up against. If you see them doing that, just, uh, just go ahead and stop your attacks. We're also going to call all of our puppets in as well. We've basically just surrendered all of this area. We don't need to waste men and manpower holding it. So pull back to El Alamein. You've got your level 10 forts and they're going to have a really hard time trying to break this. Now that Poland's capitulated, you can also train divisions using their manpower. You can see the effects of not only like the carrier naval bombers, but just our fleet in general coming out to engage the enemy. Five Italian submarines sinking their convoys off the coast of Spain. We're also getting some of their convoys before off Norway. For one, it's going to stop them getting any resources in, but it's also going to chip away at their war support and their stability. One thing you want to focus on here is taking out their ports. That's going to be here. And down here, they've also got a couple of ports or one port, sorry. So if you can take out those, that's going to trap any of the Axis divisions here, which is going to put a big dent in their manpower. So make sure that's a focus for you. Just keep checking on your air map as well. You can see that they're currently bombing Southern England. We can actually just switch off some of these fighters to help cover that off and prevent them from ruining our infrastructure. As different nations capitulate, you're gonna get more of these decisions popping up for, within the governments and exile tab. So certain ones like expatriate donations, they give you extra uh, military and civilian factories. You can go for the extraction campaign, which is gonna give you more manpower for that nation to train their divisions. Uh, you can also request control of their Navy. Um, so just keep an eye on those decisions. Yeah, sometimes they reject, that's fine. They're always handy to get get a bit of extra, bit of extra navy, bit of extra benefits coming through there. Belgium's capitulated, and one thing you want to do is come down here in Africa so you can see immediately all of this is taken over by Germany. So you actually just want to have these troops that you've already stationed here move through and sort of prevent the Germans. Cause if they get a bunch of troops in here, it's just gonna be a big pain in the ass to have to deal with. All right, Chamberlain has resigned. We have Churchill as our prime minister now. Based on that, we also have these speeches pop up available. So the blood, sweat and tears speech, uh, it's going to give us stability, war support. The US needs us to complete these speeches to do certain things. So make sure you tick that. Once you have the political power, go through those. Here is a great example of our anti-sub warfare uh, ships working well. Five Italian subs. So you can see in the battle, we had our cruiser. I've been trying to catch these while the battle's ongoing, but uh, we can see our cruiser there and our destroyers have engaged and been successful. Oh, there is actually one here now. So this is like, you can just see that it's working. Our cruiser and our destroyers are locating and finding these submarines and, and destroying them. I've basically just got them running off this coast here right now. Oh, we have a big naval battle. Look at this. They're all running away. Absolute cowards. Absolute cowards. We did get a few of them though. France has capped and look, there is a super rare chance that this will happen, but you can request control of the French Navy and I've gotten it, I think once. Yeah, usually they'll reject it, but I've gotten it like once out of my <laughs> entire lifetime of playing Hoi. It's worth taking a shot. Also, another thing that you're gonna wanna do is Operation Catapult, because if like eventually the Germans have an opportunity to steal the French Navy, uh, you don't wanna give them that chance. So Operation Catapult basically takes out the French fleet if they don't give them to you. We've taken out all of the uh, quote unquote German territory here, and now we can just come over and take out these two divisions. Once that done, this army can come back over to Ethiopia. They've just got this port here and We've already captured their other ports. So all these troops are trapped. They're all encircled. Here we go. Operation Catapult. Let's launch that. French reject the ultimatum. A again, at this point, there is a tiny, tiny RNG chance that the French will actually surrender their fleet. So what we want to do here is just execute that. The Germans have just declared war on Norway. If you're doing a long game, you don't want them to get the heavy water production, which is going to give them a bonus to their nukes. What we can do is I've just had this army sitting here on standby. And what we're actually going to do is bring them over and just put them on port defense here. And look at that. All of our ships even got over there without being sunk. We just researched the improved medium airframe. Pretty much the same design as before, but you can also add on the radio navigation module, which is going to reduce the nighttime penalty. This one's pink. That's awesome. I love it. All right, we're doing pink planes. Here we go. The long awaited German naval invasion of Norway and they've failed. Again, a human player would probably be able to beat you easily here. So you'll need to keep an eye on the micro, but single player, just garrisoning the ports will be more than enough. Amazing. Look at this. We've finally pretty much got them all encircled and trapped. Yeah. Look at that. About 12 divisions. There was about six in there as well. There's another, what, half a dozen, a dozen in here. Clean them up, finish it all off. Absolutely great stuff. Look at that. 
beautiful. This is also a good one with the Mexican oil. You want to embargo them until they come to their senses. They'll eventually join the allies. So this is one thing you can do if you are getting convoy raided in particular sea regions and you know, you can't access it with your fleet, like your fleet's not in range or whatever. You can actually just select the sea region and in the bottom left, you can set the access level. So you can set things to avoid and your ships will try to avoid it unless there's no other way. You can also see where your trade routes go just by clicking on the trade, uh, the trade menu. So you can see a lot of our ships go through that off the coast of France, which Germany now controls, not ideal. So if we set that to avoid, come back in, unpause, and you can see they all avoid that now. We now fully control Africa. Now you've got these three armies here, and they're full of like our colonial troops that we've stolen and those soldiers that we've trained using like, you know, Indian and uh, Australian manpower and whatnot. We'll bring this army up to North Africa. And then with these other two armies here, what we're going to do is bring one of them over and we are going to guard the coastline of Singapore. And then with the other army group, we are basically going to bring them over and pop them on the border here. So basically, you've got one army on port defense, one army that's, I mean, also on port defense, but also guarding the coastline. And then another army, which is going to stop Siam from pushing down and ruining your day. So this army group here, once we secure North Africa, we're going to have to bring them back over and help them defend India. And while I've been waffling on, you can see that a bunch of naval invasions have actually landed. It's not going to be enough for them to actually take any of these ports and all these troops are just going to die. Another great way to just burn through more of the manpower and equipment of the Germans and Italians. I was just checking my air map. Look at the casualties or look at the, the rate at which we're trading. 35 fighters in the last month versus almost 500 of theirs and like all their support planes and bombers that they've lost as well. You cannot sit there and tell me that the plane, this plane design is not good. That's going to help us. Like if we check the Intel tab, yeah, six to 700 CAS, about 2000 fighters. We only have a thousand. So definitely like cannon battle of Britain type numbers here. We might be about to capture a railway gun which like, they're helpful, don't get me wrong, it's not gonna be game changing, but it would just be funny, come on. Yes, let's go, we have a railway gun. I don't think they have, yeah, they don't have any infrastructure there. Let's connect up their railway lines with the rest of their country. We also do have these tactical bombers. Now, given that we're being naval invaded so much in the Netherlands, we're just gonna pop these guys on that Northern area finish those those Italians off. You're basically just playing very defensively at this point, sinking convoys, sinking their submarines, cutting off any supply. Once the Germans go to war with the Soviets, that's going to be kind of our key when we can start pushing, like, for example, taking back North Africa. You can also just keep an eye out over here, like, for example, lend lease some guns to China, perhaps. This is also one of the better things about playing as the UK. You look here, you're like, oh, no, all my production slots are filled ah oh, what are we gonna do no you have like all of africa <laughs> you can you can build mills all through here so yeah don't forget you've got all that you can also build stuff in your puppets too but uh not really necessary right now now this this is one of my favorite things to do when the italians declare war on the greeks this airport is absolutely vital and if you just take your 24 stack army and pop them on there it's going to be incredibly hard for them to unsee you from that. The other thing you can do is bring your North African Air Force and just pop them in, pop them in Greece to help defend that. It's not our manpower either, so we're not really going to be losing out if they do, you know, get naval invaded and cut off or whatever. And that is our air doctrine done. Also, I recently learned that my family heritage, so like uh, it's two generations back, emigrated to Australia from Greece. My family is actually from like the Kalamata area where the ancient Spartans used to live. So I'm claiming it. I'm basically Spartan. I'm taking it. Uh, so remember how I said you could just pop this army here and uh, <laughs> they'd be able to hold back the enemy? Yeah, it's a super strong tile. They're just going to keep attacking and attacking. They're going to keep racking up casualties. Yeah, it's look, it, it is a bit, it's a bit rough. It's a bit dog because it's very, I mean, the AI was basically never going to break you there. Uh, one thing you do need to be aware of them is like naval invading behind you. But if you just keep your fleets active, they're probably going to have a difficult time of doing so. Uh, I've just jumped onto Total Mob and always make sure whenever you do this, you have an extra 100 political power to go instantly to women in the workforce. Total Mob, if you notice, actually reduces your recruitable pop by 3%, but women in the workforce gives you that straight back. It does reduce your stability slightly because, you know, people are mad that women can get a job or some shit. You, you don't have any manpower to spare. Uh, speaking of, we actually have minus 5% consumer goods. Uh, so I guess we're creating some consumer goods factories out of just nothing. 
now, like the people are producing things and giving it back to the state out of the goodness of their hearts. We just got the advanced small airframe, the 13th of April, 1941. So good. Let's just have a quick look compared to our old design, like the improvements. So 44 air attack, 65 agility. Look at the agility increase. That's so good. Obviously the air attack is the same because we have the same weapons on here. That's actually crazy. We can add two of the double cannons on there. I think we'll leave it for now. We don't really need that much more air attack and we'll keep the production cost a little bit lower. Once we get the upgraded cannons, we can swap that over. The Germans are not going to know what hit them. Oh, it does need a lot of aluminium though. Jeez. Oh, we've got a bit of a situation here. So the Germans have actually landed up in the north. I know I've shown you the air force like window a lot i i need to show you this southern england my, look at this look at this that that's insane the ratio oh the ratio look at that look at the amount of planes we've shot down granted aa's done a lot of their bombers and stuff but like oh my god look at that look at that that's hectic the Germans have declared on the Soviets now, so they're going to be pretty distracted on that front line, leaving the rest of it. Like, this is basically time for us to push. This is where you can start attacking. One thing worth mentioning is when Japan enters the war against the US, they're going to have Tora Tora Tora, the national spirit, but they're basically going to just murk you in any of the naval battles. So honestly, don't even have a fleet over here. Like, it's not worth you having a fleet in in the Pacific until they lose that national spirit. All right, naval invasion has landed. First thing we're going to do is move across and cut off any troops there. Look, if you do this, if you time this right, you'll be able to secure a lot more Italians there. We'll just basically push our way all the way across. You can use your Marines for this as well. And Japan has declared war on the US. Around this point as well, we're going to start using our spies to build up intel in Italy, basically just in all the places that we are going to be invading. Reduce any of the um, bonuses that the enemy will get, reduce their entrenchment, make it a little bit easier overall. Oh, there we go. Japan's declared war on British Malaya and therefore us, so we can invite the US to our faction. Sensational. We'll also bring our attack bombers. Half of them in this region, half of them in this region. And here we go. This is the spirit I was talking about. Tora, Tora, Tora. 12% naval bombing, 12% naval agility, naval targeting, reduction in carrier overcrowding, port strikes, sort efficiency. So the 1st of April, 1942 is when that's gone. And that is when it's also going to be safe for us to bring our fleet back over. We've just researched the armored car. So we are going to put a little bit of production into that. And the other thing that we are going to be researching is the amphibious, the armored, armored tractors, amphibious tractors. Amtraks. We're going to be doing Amtraks. We also have finished our justification on Vichy, so we are going to declare on them. Vichy's joined the Axis. Oh my goodness, I've just realized I've forgotten about North Africa. Half of these troops are going to come back here. Yeah, make sure you've got all your borders covered before you go doing anything like that. And we've landed. Let's push out. Look at the results of these naval battles. Like knocking out some cruisers. Look at that, one of their battleships. Bit of a Papua New Guinea campaign. Japanese are invading the Dutch East Indies. As long as they don't get their hands on this rubber. That's all that matters. Oh, look at this nice little encirclement here. Particularly if you have a human player as the Soviets, you'll need to lend lease them. Particularly guns. Like guns is the main thing they're going to need. And there we go. North Africa is ours. We've almost polished up that bit there. And same with Syria as well. So we're still holding Greece, which is... Fabulous. Gives us a bit of an avenue that we can push up through there if we want to. We've secured that. All done. On to the next one. I'm actually so disappointed that Japan hasn't tried to naval invade Singapore yet. They're going for everything around it, but not the vital rubber that they need to take away from us. I don't know. There's still still early days yet. By the way, Siam joined the Greater East Asian Co-Prosperity Sphere. So I've just added these two army groups sorry, around it to uh, help prevent them from getting any ideas. Oh, this is what I mean. This is like the risk of playing in Greece. You need to make sure the Italians can't naval invade you. There we go. That should give us enough supremacy to stop us getting naval invaded again. And let's launch our attack on Sicily. They really don't have that many troops here. Now, look at this perfect invasion of Sicily. And we can actually just put this entire army group on an attack order and run straight up through Italy. Uh, we can push from here if we really wanted to. Uh, I am just going to simply not because I don't want to cop the casualties. The Italians are just crumbling. Let's have a quick check back on the Pacific. Rome has fallen. Oh, we've got our rocket techs. Let's go. Yeah, these marine divisions are great. Especially like attacking across the rivers and stuff. Let's keep going. 
Oh, who can we invite? Ireland, it is over now, ladies and gentlemen. It's over. What we're going to do here, look, uh, honestly, we could just keep pushing, but I, I really want to do a D-Day. I really want a D-Day. It's it, wow, Look, we're quite a few years early, but, you know, we'll, let's see how we go. Oh, I'm sorry. Did someone say the largest seaborne naval invasion in history? I mean, all naval invasions are seaborne technically, but you, you, you know what I mean. We've got... Our fleets ready on naval invasion support. We've got our air forces deployed. We're paused. Let's activate all these naval invasion orders. Oh, look at the arrows. And let's send it. Slightly larger than D-Day, I think. Oh, look at those green bubbles. Oh, this is beautiful. How's your Atlantic wall now? As soon as we get some landings, we're going to start pushing up. Let's take that out. Actually, let's go for that. We really just need to connect up this whole thing. That way we can just draw that front line. Oh, look at this. Reverse Dunkirkdom. Give him the old razzle dazzle. And we're about to... Yeah, how does it feel? How does it bloody feel? Now, we can delete all of their orders. And we're just going to battle plan to uh, Berlin, I think. Just to take out the rest of Italy. They can attack. Let's go. Close up all these pockets. Consolidate our front lines. Paris is liberated. Yeah, pretty easy from here. Look, we've launched it a little bit early. Obviously, you know, things will be harder when there's actually human players in your game. Also, for doing it against AI, like I know, especially if you're newer, it can be a little bit overwhelming having so many different things that you're trying to focus on as the UK. So let's bring these uh, exiled troops over and they can help liberate their homeland. And you know what? Troops in Greece, they can attack as well. Full offensive on every front line. But uh, yeah, I hope this helped you out a bit. Obviously, yeah, it's going to be harder if you're playing against human players. You can obviously jack the difficulty up a little bit and make things a bit more tricky. But by and large, this is going to be a pretty good strategy, particularly for your newer player to help get you set up and sort of break things down a little bit and make it not seem quite as overwhelming. I mean, the game's pretty much over here. Pulling off naval invasions of that sort of capacity, uh, there's not much the AI is going to do against that. There's not really much that a human player can do uh, naval invasion that large if i got naval invaded along the entire coastline of france i would uh, i would just alt f4 honestly look if you're a germany player it's going to be hard to come back from singapore is the only area in asia that hasn't been taken over by the japanese and i think it's just because they are looks at that and they're like nah too hard basket that strategy works pretty well against human players too a lot of them they'll actually get down to thailand and they'll push their way down through there i didn't really get to show that off but hope you guys liked it if you want more videos like this just let me know uh let me know in the comments if you have a different way of doing this or if there's any other sorts of videos that you would like to see but in any case thank you all so much for watching and i will see you guys in the next one